Welcome to episode 29 of Venture Ventures campaign. We are a bunch of flar flarfinars. That's a you guys. That's a common. That's a common thing. Wait, you guys. Is this know? like the? Is this like the group of like animals you're gonna ask us like the murder of? I just what, no yeah crows? no. I just decided to make up a. Uh, sure, we'll call it a that a flarfinar is a group of flumps. Uh, mm -hmm. turns out. Anyways, we uh, are LARPers, improvisers, storytellers who play D&D &D 5e in my homebrew world of Exoros. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. And let's go around the table before we get started and introduce yourself, the name of your character. And uh, yeah, we'll, after that, we'll get started. Dave. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is David Roderick, and I play a character called Prodding Rod. He's a Kenku warlock, and he's super tormented. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lex. Uh, I'm Lex. I play Ashwin, the Mousefolk fighter, um, and apparently I can do the best impression of crispy oh yeah we'll get to you in a second after we go to ryan i'll bounce back over to you uh ryan hi i'm ryan omega and i play orson acres a warlock pig farmer perfect uh a, a ginger warlock pig farmer right yeah ginger warlock pig farmer oh. very stouty person thank you for uh reminding me on that let's bounce over to brian played by the famous lex uh, how does this go? Hello. I was about to go to a pirate, so that's really oh, bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would have been good. You got anything? Mm -hmm. I'll bounce over to Dave. Dave, hit me with a Brian. Yeah. Hey, howdy, folks. Um, Crispin. I'm Crispin Glover. Uh, <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a monk. I'm a Kensei monk. Got Yeehaw. a lot of swords. And... Got a lot of... I got a whip. Watish, watish. That's how we. That's how we do the whip sound in the south. Got a whip. A watish. warning. <laughs> it tickles me in the night in case anything bad is about to take place. Uh, gives me a tickle in the ear. And Brian will be here any second now. He is flying in on a jet plane, but we'll get started without him for the time being. And if he comes up, if his character comes up, one of you. Can uh, go ahead and, yeah, do an impression. Uh, that's the price you pay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, last time on Venture Ventures, Orson eavesdropped on a conversation. We're going to keep it vague today. Ashwin got a back tattoo of a disembodied toothy grin, and a family of flumps cowered. A gnarly Nothic shared secrets and asked for a favor. A creepy dolly dearest just wanted to play. And the group stepped on the top of the wide back of a Nothic, which also happened to be a teleportation circle, and teleported up to Mostashar, the floating crystal tower that looms above the southern portion of the Viranal Dominion, which is the area of the continent that they have been adventuring in for a few weeks now, uh, in-game weeks. Um, and then at the top, once they teleported, they, uh, were greeted by a famous gnome inventor and philanthropist, uh, named Felix Tricknips. I almost made it through philanthropist, uh, didn't quite do it though. So, um, when you guys teleported in, I described this last time, but I'll do it again. Uh, it's a crystal, pretty large crystal cavern that you're in, um, there's it's similar to what you saw in the caves the the raw there's not a lot of raw crystals around as you saw in the cave but the colors are similar except this time there's various lights and you don't know what it is shooting through the walls and and various structural supports of this tower um and uh felix says to you welcome you made it whoa Thanks. Um, can I ask a, a question real quick? Do do we know what what he looks like? Um, no, not. I mean, you just heard his name because it's just 
various technologies that has okay. been uh, Felix Stricknips and Avner Bree. They were partners. And yeah. Um, yeah, so you just know he was a gnome and he has uh, he has a uh, very I'm trying to remember the name of the the type of beard. I believe it's it's called a uh, is this are you getting Brian right now? No. No, Lex dropped off. Okay. Um, Franz Joseph style beard. Thank you, Jake. Uh, gray beard um, and gray hair combed back. He's four foot tall. He's wearing a bronze, dull bronze suit of armor that you've never really seen. It's logical and easy to surmise that he's an inventor. Therefore, he made his own uh, armor. And the seams of the armor kind of give off a rose-hued, reddish glow. Um, and also, the first thing you notice after Felix is behind him there is a seven foot tall figure in black monk robes who um, doesn't have the normal features of any humanoid you've seen. Uh, he doesn't have eyes, he doesn't have a nose, and you can't tell where his mouth is. He's got stripes kind of in chevron shape, the like, um, bands of various materials going around his hairless head and they come like this down in a chevron and they just go down 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 through his eyes there's no eyeballs there's no nose various colored materials some of them you think oh that's probably gold yellow gold that might be silver and it just continues down till it gets to about chin level um, and as far as you can tell, you're about 20 feet away. It goes all the way around its head. Uh, and, um, yeah, he says, welcome. And, uh, that's what you see right now. I, uh, I telepathically communicate with, uh, the adventuring party and I go, Hey guys, I think based on what I've heard and, the fact that this guy has a lot of technology around him and and his uh, beard and everything, I think this is Felix Tricknips. He's like, he's super powerful, and he he's the inventor. He's the one who created the train that uh, that we rode on. Yeah, you guys know this um, this uh, Felix Tricknips name, like I said earlier. So, um, and he goes, "Oh, how rude of me!" And one of the things you notice is his accent kind of changes frequently. He goes, oh, how rude of me. I'm sorry that I didn't introduce myself. I'm Felix Tricknips. But uh, who who might you be? I, I think I've been expecting you. What happened to your voice? Oh, I, I often forget about that. Uh, okay, so I have lived a long time, many places, and sometimes you pick up different things from the places you visit and for me apparently it's the accents so sorry if it bothers you in any way who might you be good sir oh i'm orson acres orson uh, i Akers. oh like i not uh, i'm not important you should be talking to this person and he pushes prodding right in front of him like towards towards felix Prady goes Prady just telepathically says, I'm I'm prodding Rod and I think you you were the creator of of this construct that was helping us named Iris. Oh yeah? Which, uh, which one uh what does she look like? Go ahead and describe this uh construct for she me. She can change she can change her face to to nice or angry <clears throat> and she's uh She's just kind of she's kind of skinny and she's she's got swords. And she's pretty handy with them. Okay, does she have uh, daggers coming out of her wrist area there? And you notice when his oh, when his accent yeah. changes, um, it's super smooth, a lot smoother than I'm doing it. Um, yeah, so it has those daggers coming out of her arm area. Yeah, that definitely sounds like her. 
Yes. Yeah, we kind of lost track of her. Um, long story short, he, and Prady pulls out the two pieces of the rod that he has. He goes, look, I have these two pieces. I'm trying to get the third piece. I wanted to know how you came to be in possession of one of the pieces of the rod of seven parts and why you used it to, to create a construct. Yeah, I might, I might say I'm, uh, very impressed there. Very, very impressed. You have two parts of the rod, but first, before we get to that, uh, let's please introduce yourself. Can we, Hello, I'm Ashwin. Hi. Are you... This is an adventuring party. Okay, so here, here's the thing. You... I'm stuck on you, young Ashwin. I'm not quite sure what role you might fill out in an adventuring party. You... Thank you. <laughs> yes, quite so, quite so, looks back at uh, the hulking figure with the banded uh, head, doesn't move or really give a reaction, um, and Felix turns to you, Orson, and, and says, might you be a, a warlock of some kind? I am, I, I be a warlock, yes. Uh, and uh that accent's rubbing off on Orson now. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, 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 oh! What? How do I get rid of this? Ah! Oh, um, no, what is this? Ah! Oh. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try in Irish. Don't you worry. Uh, yourself one bit. It uh, won't stick. Anyways, so warlock. Prodding I, uh, rod. Uh, yes. Prodding rod. That's me. You. I can't get a bead on what. Sorcerer. Oh, I'm a warlock too. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, we'll get back to you two. Uh, and you, sir, human with all the weapons and the whip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> might you be. Crispin. Cr Crispin. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Say more, Crispin. Say more. <laughs> uh, these folks around here may call me a monk. A monk? Sometimes I, I just fly. A monk of what kind, if, if you don't mind me asking there? I reckon you don't want to find out. Holy <laughs> I like your attitude there, Crispin. Do you mind if I call you Crispy? Not at all, sir. Fantastic. Okay, now, so, um, uh, so the two warlocks, I, Ashwin, did, uh, Ashwin? You, you, uh, would you happen to be a rogue? No, I'm also a warlock. He's very surprised at this, kind of uh, <laughs> chuckles to himself and squints his eyes and uh, go ahead and roll a deception check. Or if you just want to be like, oh, I'm joking, that's fine. Oof. No, I'm going to try it. <laughs> yeah, a what? Which one? Deception check. So roll a d20 and then um, add your deception modifier. 19. Wow. Wow. Quite a party of adventurers who are uh, warlocks. Uh, uh, Prati, who might be your patron, if I may ask? Oh, my patron is, is a celestial named MC. So he made himself known to you, is that correct? Several times, yes. Interesting, interesting. Orson... Who is your patron? Oh, well, he is an archfey, 
And oh, what is what is happening with my mouth? Oh, all right, all right. So, crispy is <laughs> now, just wearing off on you, or something. Th something's wearing off. All right. So I got an arch fay for a patron who decided that, uh, well, I'm going to help you with raising your farm after you came back from the war. So, uh, so I said, yeah, because I needed a way to feed the pigs. Pigs are expensive. But he didn't uh, happen to make himself known to you in a way as such that Prodi's patron did. Is that correct? Well, I, I kind of reckon that if someone was going to help me feed my pigs and give me a place where I could settle down, then I wouldn't want to ask too many questions. Okay, okay. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing about the Fae is that um, yeah, more, mortals like us, we, um, we die if, if uh, you know, when, when we're forgotten. Our family thinks of us, our, our family remembers us, and, um, you know, we never really die in their, in their minds. But Fae, Fae can only die when they're known. Has that ever been told to you before? No. Well, it's just a small <laughs> tip uh, for you, free of charge, that uh, you might keep in your back pocket as to why he's not completely saying his name to you in such a way that here young Prodi has uh, experienced... But, uh, thank you for indulging me in that. Um, so, Ashwin, that's quite... I can't help but see that scimitar right there. Is that, uh, magical? Mine. Yeah, what, what type of scimitar might that be? A magic one. You're right. It does magic. <laughs> okay, so, <sighs> Warlock... Something's not quite right here. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but here's the thing. Where do you hail from, young mouse folk? A forest. Hey, I'm I'm quite well traveled. Do you do you remember? It's Nevermorn Forest, by the way. In case. Oh, I, I know. Okay, I just wasn't sure if you. I didn't want to put you on the spot and be like, I don't know where I lived. Um. <laughs> The first time I forgot, this time I know. Okay. Uh, does your forest have a name? It does, but why are you asking very specific questions about all of us? Well, you, you teleported into my tower. And I think that's only appropriate, don't you? Well, we got names. That's pretty good. I agree, but if you'll indulge me, it's only polite. I, uh, do all of you feel the same way? Well, no, I kind of figured we were doing conversation, yeah. so so I didn't mind. If I didn't want to answer anything, I wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I thought so as well. Uh, uh, Ashwin, you don't, you know, you can always say I don't... Uh, quite feel right answer in that if if it's a question you don't feel comfortable with yeah I, I'll, I'll decline answering okay okay all right well uh i could be a dearth of information if you ever have any questions we'll uh get to it do you guys um have anything for me i believe you were hired by me through the Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency uh, a few weeks ago. Anything? Do we have anything for you? Yeah, information. Well, we tried to uh, save uh, Alu, but he was already dead when we got to him. Interesting. What? What befell him? Some kind of monster, or that might have been someone else. Does anyone else remember? Didn't he turn into goo? 
at one point. A gas spore ex- um, yeah. was near him and exploded. He was already injured, though. Uh, very much injured uh, before that happened. That just kind of finished him off. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess you'll be uh, w- wanting your payment. That'd be great. Okay. And I believed we agreed to... Well, I'll give you... It was 500 gold per person. So... I'll give you a choice now. Uh, 500 gold or... Four uncommon magic items of my choice. Hmm. I, I do like items. the Irish accent happens to fall when he's talking about gold. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but that's real good. <laughs> that's real good. Uh, so uh, let me see. That's a good. That's a good trade off. I don't know. Well, I know that I that, that I probably personally am going to want the gold, so I can use that money back for my own purposes but everybody can take whatever they want so is it like a do we all need to agree or is it does it matter well i i suppose i could just give 500 to orson here and a magic item to young ashwin and so on and so forth Etc. Etc. Uh, yeah, I think I'll. I think I'll take the magic items. Five hundred gold is a lot, but I think I'll take five. Well, you're not getting five magic items. It would have been one magic item per person. Henceforth, Orson not taking a, an item and often oh, for. but it's five hundred. It's five hundred gold per person, though. Yes. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. You know, that's a lot. You know, I would take it. You know, uncom or uh, magic items can go for. It's obviously a negotiation thing with magic items because yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's there's intrinsic yeah, I mean, value. It's but Felix, it's, I mean, I guess this is me metagaming, but it's Felix Tricknip, so he probably has like the best magic items. So uh, I'm still gonna take or a magic item from him. So. What might you be choosing? <laughs> Magic item, please. Uh, Gold, please. Okay. I don't know what Chris. I don't know what Crispy would want. Ooh, what would Crispy want? Jake thinks he'll want a magic item, and this is uh, his fault for not taking control of of the plane and throttling it in quicker <laughs> this is what happens so A- ashwin you're right next to crispy ask him what he thinks <laughs> i reckon i want to see these magical items <laughs> well i reckon you won't be seeing them until i give them to you because it's my choice Yeehaw. <laughs> Cannon. <laughs> Cannon. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so when when you, uh, as I stated um, last week, and I didn't state at the beginning, he was kind of mixing something with his alchemy supplies when he first arrived and immediately stopped and said hello. Um, and uh, he goes back to the table there and um, looks down, looks around, can't really find anything. And looks in his coat pocket and pulls out a little pouch for you, uh, Orson, with um, 50 platinum in it, which is the equivalent of 500 gold. And he tosses it to you and he goes up to the seven foot tall figure and starts looking in. You didn't see pockets, but now there's pockets uh, on this being and um, sticks his arm in and pulls out one, two, three, three 
uh, magic items. And what we'll do is have the three of you who are getting a magic item roll a d20. And I will roll for crispy, I guess. I was like, I don't want that juju on me. <laughs> 12. Okay. 15. 12, 15, 3. Okay, here. Uh, well, here's a... Well, this should come in handy. This is a, a, a favorite of many adventuring uh, a party uh, this is an immovable rod i don't you guys can Ooh. can uh you know trade this how you wish i'm not giving it to one member in particular and he hands you an uh movable rod it's a um raw it's a rod about yay big and has a button on it and uh yeah so uh you guys know what this does right Yep. No. No. Okay. Yeah, so he clicks it and it holds in place in midair and he uh I I'll just uh go ahead and grab onto it and he pulls himself up with one arm and um yeah, it it just holds a lot of weight and can you know, you know um serve to get you out of uh precarious situations uh here's the the uh second one and it's goggles and they've got a green tint to it with gold uh filigree around it and um some sort of material holding it uh as a strap to go around your head and he hands that to you and he says oh yeah these are um well let's see yeah i i don't know if uh ken cool have uh dark vision and humans don't but your warlocks all of you except crispy so maybe i got some sort of thing going on there but uh yeah so these are will help you see in the night hands them to you awesome and i think you can find goggles of night and a movable rod in D D beyond just straight oh yeah here's here's uh, another one. This is a periapt of wound closure. And, uh, yeah, this will keep you from dying. Just straight out. I'll just say it. It'll keep you from bleeding out there. Specifically from, like, th uh, cutting damage? Um, look in D&D Beyond. It says, I believe... Off the top of my head, it essentially, if you go down to zero hit points, you won't have to make death saves. You won't be, you won't be capable of like get, fighting again. But you won't have to make death saves, which will prevent you from dying. Because if you, when you're making the death saves, the idea is essentially you, you're bleeding out. So with the perioptive wound closure, it's, um, you know, preventing hemorrhaging of your Lifeblood. Perieptive? So it's a uh, P E R I A P T. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, a crispy. Which, which one will you be taking there? Someone else <laughs> take crispy if Lex doesn't want it. Mm, Looks like she's about not. to say something. <laughs> hmm. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Wait, wait, wait. Logically, let's look at this. <laughs> 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 well, Proddy, which, which, one, which one interests you the most? I think I want the, the night vision goggles. That would be nice. All right. The... I, I think you should take the night vision goggles. Okay. Uh, and I'll take that that the last item. The which the the uh, periapt of wound closure. Okay. Yes. So, uh, young Proddy, 
those won't quite fit on your eyes as they currently stand, being that they are bug oh, eyes. Man. I still got those bug eyes. But um, yeah, maybe just uh, maybe we'll fix that by the end of our little conversation here. So um, I have a couple questions for you, Prady. Your um, your friend Max Morningbrow. Uh, I am uh, familiar with him to some extent. He uh, did mention, and he was quite serious. I thought he was playing a a joke on me, as it were. But uh, he said that you did time travel. Is that accurate? That's right. We went 12 years into the future. Yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, um, we saw your death. He doesn't really react to it, and he goes, that is mighty interesting. You know, um, well, that is, isn't me really quite yet. That's how time works, yeah. So, here's hoping that nothing happens that makes that thing come true. What else did you see there in my death? What, how did I expire? <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Um, I think, uh, I want to say it was like a steel dragon got you or, or something. It was, uh, Sarah saw it through her familiar. It was Avner Bree standing triumphantly over a uh, beaten yeah. and bloodied Felix Tricknips yeah. in the uh district of anista where the sphinxes the sphinxes are the law in the city and they have the abilities to tell truth and and lies and that makes them very good uh judges and uh, yeah. a sphinx sw- yeah, dave amal is there there's and... four of them and they're all related um and sw- amon, amon carry dave amala uh it. yeah got it you're in the District of Mercy. Yeah, District of Mercy, correct. Uh, except, ironically, in this case, there was no mercy. The Sphinx swooped down, and yeah, we didn't. We didn't actually see. I don't think we. Sarah we did. could. We could infer that that Abner had something to do with it because he was standing right there, but we didn't actually see anything happen. Yeah, Sarah did through her familiar. So, like, that's the equivalent of seeing it with your eyeballs because you can actually see through your familiar. But you didn't see it. Um, oh, that's that's quite unfortunate. Uh, well, uh, those sphinxes, though, I'm sure it was quite deserved. If uh, let's hope it was quite deserved. Uh, well, interesting. Was it? Uh, were people happy? Was the city in good order, or what was? Uh, do 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 do. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that. I don't think that timeline was too good. I think everything was. Yeah, there was monstrous pretty, races. Yeah, just disarray. Yeah, there was slavery around. Um, it was pretty rough. Uh, okay. Well, um, he looks back at you, Ashwin. Do you know? <sighs> Allow me to go through my logical train of thought here, Ashwin. You joined this crew, I'm assuming, in Anista, uh, which is close to a very large forest. The closest large forest is the Nivermorn Forest. And I am going to take a chance and ask you, do you know anything about the ever-burning tower in that forest? Hmm. I know there is a tower. The Lathe of Light? I don't... Maybe you have a different name. Hmm. Anyways, we'll get back to me. Uh, Think about that. Sh- sure. Uh, okay. Listen, uh, that fella down below who sent you up here, what did he perhaps say to you all? 
You're talking about the Nothic? Yes, the tortured creature. Very ugly. Did he tell uh, you he, anything? He was really into his doll. Um, this, he had this like, really creepy doll that would try to f play mind games with us and trick us into playing with it. Um, yes, he was very far gone. That's what I. That's what I remember. And trying to help him with things, but he just. He basically was going to bite our heads off if we didn't just get into the portal on his back. And he wouldn't let us read any of the books that he had. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're quite stingy with their information. Uh, did he... This one uh, perhaps has some ability to divine future events did he give you any sort of yeah we had some visions right uh yeah i wrote it in discord uh background oh, chat. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he gave us a long uh a long prescient uh kind of poem uh that i can't ex <laughs> i wasn't able to decipher but it was basically like a little a little excerpt for each each person in the adventure group had a little something in it for each of us. Hmm. We, uh... Interesting. Well, he looks at you, Ashwin, and he's uh, kind of side eyes you, and then walks to his his uh, lab desk and looks for something, can't find it. Looks in his pockets, pulls out uh, this pretty thick, um, kind of, I'd say coin shaped, uh, column about this big, but each one is kind of layered and he starts pulling out and it comes out on a, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Pivot? Anyways, they're basically little, uh, monocles, colored monocles, and he starts looking at you through them and, um is not satisfied and just well. is <laughs> is uh not satisfied in the way that he's like huh Inter this doesn't well uh young ashwin i do uh have a issue i must tell you about i'm mostly sure that you might be a revenant. Do you know what that is? A what? A revenant is a creature who, of uh, through some sort of magic, has come to life through a need to, usually it's only to take revenge on those who killed it, but I have reason to believe that you may be a revenant of the erasure. He's basically telling you... Can you say that again? So, yeah, uh, it's hard to... I understand. It's hard to take in. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to dance around it. It's... I've ran into a few revenants of the erasure who, through this event that happened worldwide, were created out of whatever horrible thing happened, whatever, whatever magic was released, and it seems randomly were just strewn across the world, and they have no idea about it similar to how some of the people who were affected most strongly by the erasure lost part of their memory. Uh, so what I'm telling you is maybe there's more to your story before the time of your first memory. Maybe I don't know how to say this lightly but 
maybe or maybe not you are a member of the family you think you're a member of, but I'm quite sure you have been made live through supernatural magic. Uh, are you saying that I died at one point? It's quite possible. Uh, but some of them... Uh, I met a revenant many, many years ago who... I don't think was undead. It just was born of the catastrophe of the erasure. Oh, okay. Well, you said that I might have been born out of revenge. What happens then? Do you have a drive particularly to find out more about the erasure in just about any way? I mean, now I do, it sounds like it's always trying to figure out what was going on, but I'm kind of on the back burner. Yeah, I... I think that is uh, a good telling issue, uh, telling attribute to this situation. Uh, but the Revenant of the Erasure, uh, you know, can not live without. Uncovering more of the catastrophe, and uh, in my experience, previous revenants I've met, if they did not, from time to time, uncover more secrets of the erasure, they were uh, did not meet a good end. I'm sorry to tell you this, but it. I, I feel it would be negligent and unethical if I did not tell you. I don't want to hear this anymore. Okay. And then she climbs up to Crispy and <laughs> just sits on his shoulder and like maybe tries to hide behind the hat. But... Oh. <laughs> That's our champion. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Okay. Why did you have to do that for? Normally, what you do is have everyone grab dinner, and after they have a full meal, then you could tell her things like that. But off the bat? Oh. Really? Orson, we don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Uh, I was just about to finish what we uh, came here to do. He goes over to his table and pulls some of the vials that he was working on, and he had put down... And he um, walks to the side where there are two pretty long pillars, uh, about four foot tall, of just some sort of steel. And uh, there's runes on them. And he pours these two vials into the top of these levers. And he walks over to you uh, guys and puts them, like, sticks them in the ground, except there's he's not putting them in the ground. They seem to just be held in place mid-air, and he, uh, he, uh, turns to all of you and says, I'm going to give you a choice here, and I'm, after I'm done telling you this, I'm not going to say another word until the choice is made. You know that the Viranal Dominion is... There are two forces at work. Yes. Yes, we know. Each of these levers represents... your choice in... 
what you want to do with them. They will destroy these two sides. And I give you the choice as to what to do with these levers. It is your choice to make. Wow. And he, um, he says, the left is the Strani acting company. The right is the force at work to open the living gate. The Strani, of course, are going to open the dread gate. And then he doesn't say anything. So left is Strani, right is like the shard mind and some of the illithid. Hmm. Well, my vote would be for uh, not letting the uh, shard mind open the living gate. They seem to be more dangerous. I kind of agree. I don't want Mind Flayers doing anything here. And if you want more information on what you, the information your characters already have about the Dread Gate or the Living Gate, let me know. Um, yes. I will. So, do you well, ask me a question? Like, uh, do you just want a general overview or? Yeah. Okay. I, so, the Dread Gate you found out was related to the dark powers of a certain section of the shadow fell which is a very dark place of negative energy and uh if you're familiar with ravenloft and barovia this is like metagaming uh if you're familiar with those settings the dark powers are what controls those that area of the shadow fell and the dread gate you found out would essentially be opening the viranol up to the dark powers which includes anything up to you know vampires evil sentient weapons evil dolls it's essentially just like a gothic horror on steroids it, it's an expansion of, of, um, yeah, there's a part of the shadow fell. Um, and the living gate you were told would possibly open or at least take great strides to releasing a eldritch evil of enormous proportions sealed in a prison underneath the frozen jungles to the west of the Roast Dominion, uh, excuse me, to the uh, Roast uh, area of, let me look at the map real quick. Yeah, to the Roast Territories, which is where Doomerville is, Prodi. Um, and this Father Lymec, you were told, was this eldritch evil. Just a, a, a world-wrecking entity. Um... Yeah. Anything else? I mean, feel free to ask. Well, I, I think that's good. Uh, well, I think vote for the, the stopping the living gate. Yeah, that's what Orson and I were saying, so I think we're in agreement there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I, I do have a question, uh, Felix Crispin says. Uh, I've got some friends who are well, I'm sure you know what they are. They are uh, Gith Zerai. Have you heard of them? And uh, Felix says, yes, yes, I've heard of them. Uh, and they're sometimes they hunt Illithid. They are the former slaves of the Illithid. I have read about them. And Crispy says, yes, that is what I am worried about here. So will they be harmed in this situation? And Felix says... The shard mind and all that is involved in either gate will be removed. If the Githzerai are a part of that, they will be removed. And as you guys, as he says that, 
part of the crystal tower kind of starts um, a section of it, windows, window type section, a square hole starts, um, instead of being opaque, you can start to see out um, of the tower as you're floating high above the Viranol. Um, any Felix just doesn't say anything after that and uh, Crispy is not here, so I will do my best to make the the uh, correct choice. And he says, "I don't, I don't like this, but uh, well, I'll go, I'll go with whatever you folks want to do here." I'm a little confused as to how the uh, the Gis or I are in trouble if we don't. Crispy says, don't let... "Crispy says, uh, yeah, they told me they were going on a scouting mission for this Illithid. They could still be there, searching for the Illithid, scouting the Illithid, who are uh, possibly controlling, according to to uh, the Rastilzin monks." possibly controlling the shard mind. So they could still be there. They could not be there. I was just asking for clarification. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, is there a way for us to verify if they're still with them? Crispy says, not that I know of. And Felix here wants us to make a decision. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I think I'm still going to... Parati just says that, uh, you know, because the, the Roast province or that area includes Doomerville, like, I don't want the Living Gate to be open, so... Yeah, it's um, logical. I'm going to take, take a risk that... I mean, I like the Gisserai guys, but... Um, just going to take a risk on that one. Yeah, it's logical for Prodi to think that because what you know is Doomerville is within a few hundred miles of the frozen jungles. It's not somewhere that anyone who you knew in that area of the world... Like, that's not somewhere you went because it was such a harsh and hostile envir environment. So um, uh, it makes sense for him to have that uh opinion um yeah so felix is just watching and so is that seven foot tall creature man person thing you're not sure what do you say guys stop the living gate from being opened yeah um what it sounds like is no matter what something bad's gonna happen but it seems like at least on one we can maybe have a better chance on controlling and fighting it versus the other one. I don't think we have a chance at beating it. I was going to say something else, but I kind of agree with Ashwin. We're going to... Look, all of us have this really rare opportunity. We all agreed on something. Uh, it's very rare that that happens. So I think that maybe innately that it will be a better choice. And even though unfortunate things will happen to one group, unfortunate things would have happened to either group. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think Crispin does agree with us, but oh. three versus one. Yes. He, he's essentially, uh, he as abstained essentially. Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. I think we're good to go on the, the, which one was it? The left one. The right one. The right one. The right one, okay. Closes the living gate. So which one of you pulls it? Uh, Prady will pull it. Okay. So the right one prevents the living gate from being opened, right? Yep. So Prady walks up, to, uh, walks up to it and goes, shh. When you pull it, uh, you guys hear and feel a rumble unlike anything you've ever heard before. And what you know about Felix is he was using those crystals for everything he does, uh, essentially. 
And he had a unique way of refining the crystals in a way, a very propri proprietary way of refining them to for his own ends. Um, and uh, Felix, the rumbling is happening. Do you guys go to the window or, or anything like that? The windows that are now there? Yeah. Looking yeah. down, Prati, when you pulled that lever, something pulled at your soul or or your conscience very strongly. Uh, it's It was the, the biggest sinking feeling you've ever had in your life. Um, when you go to the window, you uh, look out and you see the mountains around you. So everywhere where you knew the shard mine uh, were controlling, essentially imploding into nothing into just black and dust you can't see what it's turned into but it's just there's not fire per se it's just a big crunch um and uh that's all you see right now but it's as far as you can see in each window along the southern and uh southeastern to eastern portion of the virinal uh, mountain range it's just imploding and um, Felix walks up and takes those levers and uh, mutters something and they disappear and uh, says oh fantastic I didn't say you had to pick only one but it was your choice so here we are. Uh, back to your deal with Iris. He's very just like... He's not affected really at all. Uh, what? By anything. Um, and he says to you, Prati, so, Iris, I would very much like to... I was just thinking about it while you guys were deciding. That, I believe... That wasn't her name. I didn't give her a name when I prototyped her. She had that rod. I thought she was gone and dead, but yes, I would very much like to uh, kill her. And what do Whoa. you what do you know of her location? Oh, what do I know of her location? She is currently. Yeah, you look at your map, and yeah. Uh, I think I sent that to you, right? Like where, where your map is telling you. Yeah, I have it in here. Okay. Uh... So Prady Prady pulls out yeah, his map mimic. Yeah. And uh, if Orson and Crispy and Lex, or excuse me, Ashwin, um, look at the map, you guys see kind of a, a lightly glowing dot over Felix Town. It's just called Felix, but um, it's a small town in the Dusklands above the Nivermorn Forest. You know the Dusklands, Ashwin, uh, as across the river, the Nivermorn River. And it's essentially just rolling plains, uh, very cold, shrubbery areas of forest, but very few. It's nothing compared the forests that do that are there are tiny compared to the Nivermorn Forest. The Nivermorn Forest is four hundred miles uh wide and three hundred miles from north to south. Uh so it's substantially the biggest by yeah, substantial amount, the biggest forest in on the continent. Um yeah, it's in the Dusklands and Felix. Um, can I ask, uh, Felix, why do you want to kill her? Oh, well, it's, I created her and now I want to kill her. Uh, it's my technology. I gave her life. I can take it away. Why did you, why, why is the piece of the rod of seven parts what powers her? 
how did you come to be in possession of that? Oh, Prati, don't you concern yourself with that. It's a long story. I've been around for many centuries, as gnomes are wont to do. Uh, where do you know her to be? I've had a hell of a time locating her. I figured she had died or had cloaked she's herself. In, uh, she's in Felix Town. Oh, huh. How ironic. Uh, I haven't been... Oh, no I'm curious what that story might be. If you've been waiting for a while, I imagine ten more minutes will not affect things. Which, uh, Iris, uh, the story of Iris, or... Yes, and why you have the thing inside of Iris. Oh, well, it's just, I needed, it was, she was a prototype for the Warforged that fought in the North and uh, the War of Enver between the North and the South, and um, she was a prototype, and I hadn't quite figured out how to refine the crystals. So uh, that is what I had, that is what I used, and it is a very imp impressive piece of technology, if I do say so myself, that it has lasted this long, and she has lasted this long evading me. Uh, I wonder if the rod has something to do with why I can't track her down. Uh, what, may I ask how you found it, what kind of map is that you have there? Is that a, some, is that map alive? Yeah, it's my, uh, my map mimic. <laughs> and he go, goes and looks over your, sh or to the side of your shoulder, because I think you're taller than him. And, uh, the map, like, kind of bites at him, and he goes, oh. Well, that is quite weird. I've never seen anything like that. Okay. Um, yep, well, that's quite an overview of the continent, and it looks like she is in the vicinity of Felix Town. Could be in the town, could be around the town. How about I just send you guys there, and uh, you capture her, bring her to me. I will remove that piece for you, if you would like. Is that what you're asking me? I'm sorry. I personally have no problem with killing her. You killing her, but uh, I would have to defer to my adventuring group if they're okay with that. Are you okay, Orson and uh, Lex or Ashwin? Jesus, uh, Ashwin and Orson, are you? You seem your disposition here has changed a bit. Uh. I don't think my disposition has changed at all. I just figured that you would have been smart enough to come up with another solution. Oh, I, I am quite the busy man, as you might imagine. Uh, even if you don't imagine, I'm telling you now. Uh, and uh, I, I really gave up after, uh, well, it's been, it's been a while now. So, uh, yeah, um... I figured she had found some other magical item to disguise herself, or she just died. Uh, are you still on the neck of Crispy, Ashwin? Uh, no, I jumped. I jumped down. Okay. Uh, I have no problem at all. But uh, can I shoot uh, Prady a message? Yeah. Um. <coughs> yeah. You use your Ophidian of messaging. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 wait. It sounds like you could actually save her. Uh, we could... Because she, since she's a... He said that she's a prototype. If we find the the final product, we can replace whatever that's powering it and put it, and you can get the rod, and you don't have to kill her. That would be fine with me, too. So, and then Ashwin just says this out loud. Yeah, no, we can kill her if that's what you want. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just going. I was just gonna kill kill her myself and just drop my dice. Um, yeah, I was just gonna kill her myself, and uh, you know, since it's my property, uh, I created her. Uh, but um, we're professionals. If you'd want to do it anyway, uh, I don't see why not. So, uh, would you like a, a ride to uh, Felix through this teleportation circle? I had one out there. I think it's, I'm sure it's probably still active. The, the townsfolk 
you know, want me to come back very badly. I haven't been there in many decades. Yeah, that sounds good. We, we need uh, that. That would save us a lot of time. Um, just one last question. How do you have any advice on how to kill her or how to subdue her? Because she's pretty powerful. Yes, I made her that way. Um, well, if you can find her control uh, ring, which I have not been able to find. I figured she had it, uh, or if it's lost somewhere. If you can find her control ring, that would be the easiest way. That is how I... Uh, it's a ring uh, that goes on your finger? Oh, yeah. Okay. I have Good to no know. idea where it is. Hmm. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting to meet you all. Mm. Uh, you have quite the role to play. Uh, step into the teleportation circle, if you will, and I will get you on your way. Um, yeah, Orson goes there right away, without delay. Uh, and as you're stepping onto the teleportation circle, you can see now that whatever happened below you in the mountains is now the dust from that is now reaching your altitude in this floating tower kind of obscuring the light uh diffracting it um or refracting it uh yeah you step on the teleportation circle and a very familiar feeling of uh whooshing and and shooting out into nothingness next thing you know you are on top of a small rise looking over a small town in a very it's pretty cold the something about the Virenal dominion kept it a little bit warmer than it is where you've just arrived the sun is out but it's very windy and there's wind chill and it's very cold and uh that's where we're going to take a break because okay we are back and the gang has arrived on at the crest of this hill overlooking the small town of Felix, which is a coastal town, northern in Veer, northern coast. And, uh, yeah, what would you like to do? You look around. I'll just kind of give you more of the environmental details. Um, behind you, going away from the town, the landscape slopes upward in rolling hills sort of fashion so it's hard to you can definitely you have more of a view, vantage point going down towards the sea than going back south away from the sea um so there's definitely nobody you can really see uh clearly looking down into town and definitely can't see anything behind you because of the terrain as it is. Uh, there's a few trees and such, but that's about it. Come on, guys. Let's get down to that, that town. Crispy. Let's, uh, let's take on it. Let's figure out if any of these people have seen someone who switches their face a lot. Crispy, uh, as you guys are walking down, it'll probably be a good 30-minute walk. Um, Crispy says to you, Ashwin, he says, uh, I don't know much about what he told you being a revenant and all, but I, I did do some research before joining up with you all, t uh, in, in Veer Mall, the capital city, and I can help you with some of that research and we can find out more about what he said. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, can we find a tavern? I think we all need a drink after what we just did. I am with you. We need a drink. A stiff one. <laughs> Why? What, what just happened? <laughs> we, just, we just took out, we just took out like half of our problems. Uh, okay. Um, some of that might be Still a lot to deal with, so I agree that we should have a drink. I did get some platinum, so I will buy drinks. But we need drinks. 
Alrighty, let's go to a tavern. That that's fine with me because I could just ask people in the tavern if they've seen Iris anywhere. It, it, that too. About fifteen minutes in, down to your, you're meandering your way on this trail that kind of uh, goes down into these ravines and back out again as you make your way down to the town. Uh, make a. I gotta check. What's your passive perceptions? Um, mine's nine. Ooh. Fifteen. Twelve. And Chris. Oh, that's, that, that's my passive. But if I rolled, oh, if I rolled, it's a fourteen. Okay, let me check Crispy's real quick. Oh, Crispy's got. What he needs, per- passive perception wise. Crispy says to y'all, everyone, I, I think something is stalking us uh, in this gully that we just came out of. I wasn't sure I heard something, but I am became more and more sure as we were continuing. Uh, my whip hasn't alerted me to anything yet i'm not even sure if it's working quite right because it's been acting kind of funny but what i i I don't have a good feeling about continuing uh without doing something first to protect ourselves i think we're being stalked is what i'm saying okay uh hold on i think i may have a solution maybe I could be wrong. I'm gonna go look in my brain. Okay. Yeah. Feel free. Uh, well, in game it will just be obviously a lot quicker. Um. Um. Oh. Um. So maybe if we, I figured that maybe there's someone. Maybe I could summon a servant that no one can see, but can tell me if someone is looking at us. I mean, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, All right. Do any better. Cool. So um, he summons unseen servant. Okay. Um. Let me see if Prodi, have you done your find familiar spell yet, or do you have a familiar? I don't have a familiar. I just have to speak with animals. Okay. Um. Let me check the spell real quick. Tasks at your command until the spell's end. The servant springs into existence. Blah, 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 blah. Um, the servant can perform so, simple tasks that human servant could do, such as fetching, cleaning, mending, folding, lighting, fires, serving food, pouring wine. So I guess in this case, the task would be look for anyone that's looking at us or stalking us. Where do you send it? Like into the gully? I'm where, where can... Crispy said. Yes. Okay, and then yeah. um, I don't think it has the ability to communicate back to you. Um. So. How would you like to get around that? Um. What I would get around that is tell it. Okay, if um <laughs> someone is actually looking at us, come come back to me and then tug on my sleeve. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, sure. It uh mm-hmm. n- none of you can see this and Crispy in fact says to you Prodi, I didn't see him. I didn't see anything come uh this is weird. Are we even sure he summoned anything? And uh Orson you you know your your unseen servant is walking into the gully and mm-hmm. um as it's walking into it about half a minute later you hear a roar and a bout of fire shoots into the air. And um, I really don't need to roll for this, but I'm going to uh, because there's so many. Uh, okay. Yep. All right. I'm not even going to roll more than that. Um, and it has one hit point. So it's you feel that your unseen servant is no longer there. And the fire also told you something was going on. And c- up. coming out of the gully, uh, 
to the side to the trail and now coming at you guys is a weird sight. What you see is uh, human-like faces, but enlarged on the body of a on the body of a cat or lion type creature with leathery wings and you can't really see its tail you see two of those and it's kind of rotating and coming at you right now and then as it rotates it reveals another creature what you know to be a manticore you've heard stories um the manticores aren't exactly unknown in the world so whether it be at bars or whatnot you've heard stories of manticores there's two manticores who are kind of standing next to each other and as the creature rotates but this third creature has th three heads and it is in a similar way leathery wings a goat head a lion head and a lizard like head and it's what you assume to be a chimera um, and it looks like they're all kind of, they're either tied or something's holding their tails together. So they're kind of like in a, do you guys know what a rat king is? Mm -hmm. Um, it's essentially when a bunch of rats are born, um, sometimes they can get their tails tied into knots and they can't get them out. Mm -hmm. And so that's just kind of a, what you're seeing now. Um, these creatures are now roaring and, uh, coming at you guys slower than you would have thought, um, trying to fly, but they cannot. What would you like to do? We will roll initiative, um, after you tell me what you would like to do, if you'd like to engage or not. I'm not telling you you can get away, but, um, that's an option to try. Uh, how, do get, how do you guys feel about those drinks now? <laughs> I not I'm ah I I still want to drink, just not that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I say we try I mean, to. Uh, I, I could try to just I think outrun we can them. Find it. Yeah, or we can run too. Just roll initiative. We can still we can still roll. We still yeah. run towards the town. Ooh. Four. Oh. <laughs> Twenty-four. Seventeen. All we wanted was a nice, peaceful drink. <laughs> Lo siento mucho. Mm. Mm. Oh, come on, Crispy's character sheet. Come up. <laughs> Ooh, he has advantage on initiative and quite a good one at that. Okay. Okay, these horrifying monstrosities are coming at y'all. Uh, Ashwin, you can still talk to your compatriots about running if you'd like. Use your action to do that, or you can attack. What would you like to do? I'm just going to attack. I'm not having a good day. I, I would guess not. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> Uh, do your worst. Yes, so I am going to speak the sacred words of the sword. Mm -hmm. I think it was, uh, it's barbecue time. It's barbecue time. It's barbecue time. <laughs> <laughs> um, sword immediately goes on fire and she is going to run up. Quick, I, try to slash. quick idea, guys, um, and I'll leave this up to you out of game. Uh, do you guys want to wait the two weeks for Crispy to be back and do this encounter? Just not 
What do you want to do? Ooh. I like that. I like that. That would be, <laughs> yeah, like, I think something like this, he should be totally in this. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do you think? Dave, you cool with that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that sounds great to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we will leave it there then. Uh, it just dawned on me that um, this encounter would probably go past six and we would start two weeks later in the middle of the encounter. That'd be a nightmare for you. It'd be a nightmare for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm willing to do it. Uh, but we don't have to. So thank you so much for joining us. Episode 29. No game next week. Two players are out of town, but we'll be back the next, the following week uh, to our full number, hopefully. And let's mm -hmm. go around and plug everything and anything and nothing, if you would like. <laughs> Lex, go ahead. So I finally fixed all of my social medias. Uh, you can now <laughs> find me on Instagram and Twitter at It's Lex the Chameleon. Excellent. There we go. Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. You could find me on social medias under Ryan Omega, except Twitter, which is Ryan OMGA. You could catch my show, Blank Slate. Um, we're going to start putting up episodes on YouTube. So cool. be on the lookout for that. Um, next season, um, Blank Slate Season 2, City of Petra, starts next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, on April 30th on twitch.tv slash scabby rooster and i also have the larp podcast life action role play um a larp podcast which you can find on spotify itunes and radio public excellent and uh ve the channel you are watching venture ventures also hosts scabby rooster when you guys uh do your your larping blank slate so uh you can watch it there as well uh dave oh thank you yeah thanks uh, you can find me on the social media as a DRod3. Um, I will actually be in a uh, what's called a spank at UCB mm. May 7th. So if you like sketch comedy, um, I am in that as an actor. So cool. May 7th, UCB sunset. Nice. Ooh, what's a spank? Because I'm my brain <laughs> is thinking certain ideas and it's probably not yeah. right. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's a um, it's a show where they have three different sketch teams who submit like a full show and the sketches are all part of one piece so it's like they're the sketches will kind of be related in, in like a, a theme oh that's cool okay. yeah there's, the there's uh three of those yeah improv and sketch community comedy community uh they have a unique way of naming things in similar ways and i will do brian's outro i'm brian <laughs> you can't find me anywhere uh i don't like social media he doesn't just, say that i just like playing D. &D. That's how I, like it. I that's how i like it i just I like, like playing D, &D. uh and uh yeehaw, ye yeehaw. <laughs> and i'm jake yeehaw. friday uh you can find me on twitter and instagram at jake friday or at jake of the friday and uh follow venture ventures twitter and instagram as well thank you for watching or listening we'll be back in dos weeks high school spanish just totally failed me <laughs> totally failed me uh what is fucking... no i like dos semanas or what some, some i don't i don't remember uh my yeah, grandparents are hermanos? my grandparents would be face palming right now so um <laughs> thank you for watching and listening and bye bye be good to yourself bye. and others as i Yell, be good to yourself and others. <laughs> cool.